Hello there, my fellow truth seekers. Welcome to another video of Lifeguards. I'm joined today with Dr. Barry David, and we're here to discuss the philosophy of personhood and how that relates to the question of abortion. Dr. David, uh, how did you get into philosophy? Well, it, I suppose in some ways it's a funny story. I, I recall having my wisdom teeth out, of all things, in, in grade 11. And uh, I was curious about philosophy, and uh, I remember at that time I was reading, reading a book about the story of philosophy. And, and so in one way that helped me get interested in it. And then I, I developed a genuine interest in it when I was an undergraduate at university or an academic interest in it. And I studied a lot of classical philosophy, um, Plato and Aristotle and Augustine and, and, and Aquinas and, and moved and through modernity as well. Um, and then, uh, particularly when I was doing my master's and my, my PhD, I, I specialized in philosophy and uh, my PhD is from the University of Toronto. And uh, so um, the pursuit of wisdom, of course, um, is something which uh, is a lifelong endeavor. And uh, philosophy, of course, does mean the love of wisdom, philo, sophia. And uh, so um, it's not something that one is ever there at in this, this world anyways, but it's something that one, of course, needs to keep at in, in order to uh, continue to, to, to pursue truth. That's funny how your wisdom teeth gave yeah. you a love for wisdom. Yeah, yeah. Wow. I, I find that, yeah, it is kind of amusing when I, I look back. And uh, um, so that, 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 that played a certain role. I, I was also blessed with, uh, with very good professors and, and teachers where I did my undergraduate work and, and my graduate work, people who were very earnest and serious about their, their commitment to theism and to, to the Catholic faith and so on. And that helped me a great deal, inspired me a great deal. In, in these matters. So, um, but um, yeah, here I am today, and uh, I guess as as Newman said, it's funny how we, um, you know, how we, we move, we find our place in a, we find ourselves in a new new place, and uh, but uh, like Newman said, we just need to follow the light, and, and we can we can do that. And so I like to think that in some ways I'm following the light, um, but so that's amazing. Wow, yeah. that's pretty cool. So. Let's get into the business. Okay, good. So, abortion and the matter of personhood is kind of like very interconnected because, um, because you know, some pro-choicers will be like, oh, an embryo's a human, but it's not a person. And uh, that's probably, I think, one of the more intellectual arguments for the pro-choice movement because uh, the other ones, like saying the embryo is not a human, is just contrary to science and really easy to debunk. But the question of whether or not, oh, maybe the embryos aren't persons, is a little bit more, I feel like, a little bit more um, harder to beat. Mm -hmm. And I know from my personal experience that I actually don't really have like a good grasp on how to handle it, because I've talked to a pro-choicer before, and they brought that up, and I didn't really know what to say, so I kind of moved on to a different piece of evidence. So in other words, they would agree that, that what's present is a human being, but not a human person? Is that, is that what yeah, you're Yeah, yeah, that's basically it, because the embryo lacks consciousness. Yes. And, um... Does it? But anyways. Yeah. Well, I mean, to an extent, they don't have, um, a level of consciousness that if you could, like, consider it neurology and stuff. Yes. But I would uh, like to be better equipped on how to answer those sorts of things. Sure. Um, oh, well, so, me, uh, me too. <laughs> yes. Um, so, what is like the widely accepted definition of personhood? Well, I, I guess the most common definition of, of personhood, uh, at least in, in theistic circles, um, derives from Boethius, who writes in the 5th century. And he talks about the, the, um, that what a human person, or what the person is, is an individual substance in a rational nature. And, and um, that is modified, developed by various thinkers. But that would seem to be the, the principal definition. So an individual substance in a rational nature. And the reason why Boethius and others and, and those in the sapiential tradition like that is be, because um, it speaks about the human being as, as a rational nature, but it speaks about that it possesses that, that rational nature. Um, and the individuality is something which, which also helps understanding the irreducibility of the human person. That is to say, that the human person is made for, for an end or a telos or a purpose which, which transcends this horizon of this world. Um, 
And uh, so it, it, it's something which, which is, is very important, and it's something which, as we talk more about what that means concerning the, the, um, the not just the, well, the nature of the embryo, the nature of the fetus, and so on and, and so forth, our accounts of personhood, it, it's very important. Uh, the individual aspect is also important with respect to talking about angels and talking about God. So thinking about God as three persons uh, in one nature. So um, it, has, it has a very uh, important and significant trajectory to it. Um, and uh, so that is probably the most common definition, individual substance in a rational nature. Um, there's other definitions of, of person. Um, it, you know, um, well, it depends how, how one interprets it. Um, and uh, so there's the, an Aristotelian definition which, which Aristotle gives. He calls man um, a, a, a um, rational animal. And then there's also a, a, a contemporary account of, of a human person in, in which the, the person is defined, this is by a contemporary Thomistic philosopher, Norris Clark, um, who's, well, he's, he's contemporary, uh, though he's passed away. Um, and uh, he talks about the human being as an embodied spirit. Um, and of course, there's something really interesting in these accounts of, of personhood, um, both pertaining, well, pertaining ultimately to abortion in terms of what we're talking about, but also as an end in itself. Um, in, in terms of these definitions, uh, a, a couple of distinctions by Carol Wotia, I think, uh, also known as John Paul II, are, are quite useful. Um, one is that he's, he's concerned with what, what he would call the, the irreducibility of the human being as against the reducibility of the human being. Um, and that's something which pertains to, to abortion discussion as well, because if the human being is reducible, meaning that it is mortal and finite, um, then, in, you know, then in, a, in a certain way, um, those who want to commit abortion um, might try to say, well, hey, uh, the human being's end is death anyways, so, well, why not carry it out? Uh, what's the difference, really, in, in the long run, a kind of perhaps a utilitarian sort of thinking? Um, so, Wotia would like that, he likes the Boethian definition of an individual substance in a rational nature, um, and he would probably like the, 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 the definition given by Norris Clark as an embodied spirit. Why? Well, because when he looks at these definitions of the human person, he, he notices that, that they have two parts to the definition, that there is what's called a proximate genus, um, and then there's also a specific difference. And what, what he doesn't like about the Aristotelian definition taken literally, um, Aristotle himself has a very robust account of the human soul, as irreducible, that is to say, as, as, as being immortal and as being something which um, uh, in some way is divine. Um, but what Wotia likes about the other definitions is, is that it, 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 it will formally establish the human being as something which is irreducible. So, man is rational animal. Well, animal would be your, your genus, and animals are, are, con are assumed by us, are understood by us to be mortal. And so the term rational as what separates the human being from other human being, uh, from, from over the head, separates the human from other animals, I suppose, is, is something which, which would suggest that the human being as a whole is, is reducible. Uh, on the other hand, to talk about the human as an individual substance in a rational nature or as an embodied spirit would, would allow for the, uh, the rational nature or the, the, the spirit uh, to be the genus, and therefore that would, would enable one to show that the human being is, is not um, um, reducible, but is irreducible, has its end in God. There's another distinction which he makes, um, which makes me think that, um, uh, that there are two of those definitions that are particularly useful uh, in, in combating the scourge of abortion, and one isn't. Um, and, and that is a distinction he makes between what is cosmological and what is personalistic. And, uh, and the thing is about, about personalism and personalistic is that the way that Wotia defines it, it's concerned with the primacy of conscience in, in the, the conscious life of the human being so that we are aware of what's done to us and we're also aware of what we do to others. We think about it, we reflect on that. Um, now that's something which, um, which would show, uh, which would um, 
I think, um, present a kind of difficulty in arguments against abortion because it would identify personhood with a specific type of activity, um, which, which it doesn't seem that fetuses and embryos uh, carry out when they're in the, you know, when they're in, in in the womb. It seems to me that what one would need to focus on, on on the human nature as such. So the individual and irrational substance and and uh, understood a certain way and perhaps embodied spirit and understood a certain way might help with that. And perhaps the further questions that you'll ask will enable that to be explained um, at a greater greater length. Mm. Um, so so in other words. The, the difficulty with, with one view um, is that it's focusing on an activity which is carried out. And that activity would be the result of the actualizing of some potentiality. So for, for example, uh, one would maintain that, that the, the embryo um, is, is, a, is a living body, a living human being. A living human body, living human being. And that it has within it the potentiality to carry out certain activities, um, so that walking and talking is not something which the embryo does, just like thinking is not something which the embryo does, but it's something which is there in potentiality, so that later on, in the course of experience, in the course of, of development and so on, those potentialities come to fruition. Um, much like a, a, an acorn is related to an oak tree, uh, much like uh, a seed um, well, an oikian corn is a seed, but as a seed is related to, to living, living uh, beings, plants and animals and, and so on and so forth. So um, the, 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 the concept of potentiality and actuality is really important here. Um, and Could you the, explain a little bit? Sure. Terms? Um, Aristotle is the first one who speaks about those, and, and he does um, in a very helpful way among other places, and most notably he speaks about it in his physics, then he speaks about it in his metaphysics as well. And uh, in his metaphysics, he talks about how these are correlate principles, that actuality has to do with what is, and potentiality has to do with what is able to be. So at conception, what is present is the human being, the actuality, the nature is the human being. And at conception, what is present is potentialities, which then come to develop. So, for example, um, the, the embryo will certainly, uh, you know, once fertilization occurs, there is what philosophers would, would call uh, a substantial change, that a substance comes to be. Um, and philosophers distinguish that against non-substantial change. So, for, for example, my waving my hand is a non-substantial change. Why? a non-substantial change because it's something which is occurring um, in me, it's something which I do. But my coming into existence or my ceasing to be in existence would be a substantial change insofar as what hasn't been is now and what, and what, and, or, um, or what has been no longer is. And of course it's problematic with the human being insofar as we have an immaterial and immortal soul. Um, but um, uh, so there's a host of distinctions which come into play. Uh, but so actuality and potentiality, they're, 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 they're correlate distinctions. And uh, when it comes to potentiality, it has to do with what's able to be, actuality, which, which is what is. But of course, potentialities can only be found in actualities. They don't exist by themselves. Um, they need to be found in, in real things need to be found in what, what uh, philosophers would call substance. Um, and, and so that's, that's a very important distinction to make uh, when it comes to understanding the nature of the embryo and also when it comes to understanding the personhood of the embryo. Because if people identify personhood with a specific activity carried out uh, by, the, the, carried out by the, the rational part of the soul, well then that activity is there in principle at the very beginning insofar as, the, as rationality is there. And so it comes to be actualized over the course of time. And that, of course, would also be why infanticide um, is, if abortion's wrong, of course, infanticide will be wrong, but it would be for the same reasons, hmm. essentially. Um, so anyways. Oh, is, is, that, is, is that a helpful distinction between yeah, actuality? Yeah, that, that is a very helpful distinction, I think. Uh, what would you say to someone who 
say if you like destroy a seed of a tree somehow, and a pro-choicer would say, well, you didn't chop down a tree. You didn't. Would you say you killed a tree or? No, because the uh, one thing that has to happen is that the seed needs to needs to germinate, right? Right. And so um, if it's if it's living. Uh, there's a difference between um, between the tree being alive and a tree being being um, uh, potentially alive. So the, the 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 acorn, as I understand it, or the 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 seed. You know, some people would contest the acorn. Some people say that it's already alive, uh, but uh, um, the seed would be considered to be a material cause of the thing. That is to say, something which makes the thing up, but not the thing itself. Um, so, so that my, my ear, for example, um, it is part of what makes me up, but it's not, it, it doesn't um, uh, encapsulate my, my, my personhood, doesn't encapsulate my being a, as a human. Um, so, um, you know, there's another distinction. Which, um, so which, like, like a seed wouldn't be a tree till it starts to germinate? That, that's right. You know, it would be a shrub and it okay. will be, it'll go through various stages. Oh, kind of like uh, with sperm. That, that's yeah, well. That that too would that would be what's what's needed in order for the in order for the the embryo to come to be. There needs to be an ovum. There needs to be sperm and so on. But it's at fertilization that the um, that the embryo comes to be. That's when the human comes to be. So um, the uh, the sperm and the ovum would be principles causes, but not. The thing itself. So um, the carrot seeds and the celery seeds that one could buy at Home Depot or or at um, um, at Lowe's. I don't want to be uh, um, <laughs> don't want to be partial here. Uh, those those would um, those would not be carrots. Those would not be be celery. Obviously, they're 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 seeds. And I think the instructions would tell you that in order for them to take. That, that one needs to, to use certain um, minerals um, and there needs to be water and, and, and as minerals a certain type of soil and so on and so forth. And uh, in, in the course of, of, um, of really remarkable uh, development, there, there comes to be from planting these seeds, carrot seeds, um, a, a patch of carrots. Call it, no, it's a cabbage patch, isn't it? What do you call it? A group of carrots. I'm, I'm not sure what you... Uh, what what you call it? But uh, maybe I have to ask Peter Rabbit. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, hmm. That's interesting. So it's well. So it it's usually um, in Western civilization the more common definition of that it needs to have like a rational nature. Yes. In order for it to be a person. Right. Even right. if it's not at that moment using that rationality. Right. So so what the parents produce. Um, you know, I, I recall I have a few few children, and at, at first I was kind of puzzled why people were were congratulating me. You know, well, why would they congratulate us when when you know when there's a pregnancy? But then you 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 realize that of course um, that the immaterial soul and the fertile the active actually the fertilization is something which in some way depends upon divine providence. Uh, but 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 yes, uh, to be a human being. Is to be made up of a human soul and human body, and uh, the human soul is considered to be, in a general way, the principle of life, and so the embryo is alive and it is a human substance. Um, its principles come from the parents, and and uh, this goes outside the scope uh, of what we're talking about. But the uh, the immaterial soul ultimately comes from God. Mm-hmm. But um, so. It's kind of it's interesting. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's fascinating. Learn, yeah, and you know, I learn things as I as I go along, and, and uh, I, I under now I've, I have come to understand, or I came to understand at a certain point, uh, why people would be congratulating my wife and I on uh, on my wife's pregnancy. So it's, it's it, you know it's kind of interesting. Yeah, yeah. there's a romance as, as Chesterton and others would would say to um, um, to uh, understanding um, theism. Catholic theism in particular. Yeah. Excellent. So, so not everybody accepts that definition that you do need to have an active rationality being used. Um, is there any way further we could reason with them? Because I know 
it's actually becoming more and more common today to have um, support infanticide and like up to birth abortions. Um, uh, I think that's what are they called? Yeah, that? after well, a polite name is after birth abortion, but it's infanticide. Really. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but but yes, uh, so you do have certain. And uh, my initial reaction was like, "That's disgusting! How could you kill a newborn?" But really, is there any way we could like reason with them further? I think so. I mean, I think one thing to, to notice at the beginning is that they are theorizing and they have a reason why they, they think that this would be okay. In other words, why they think it would be okay that, that, that parents or, or caregivers or whatever would want to, um, uh, to well, we, you know, murder a young child. And, and it's interesting that they're theorizing because insofar as they theorize, they're upholding rationality. As, as something which is authoritative. And if they're holding, uh, upholding rationality as something which is authoritative, it seems that there's a couple directions in which one can move. Um, one is that um, what they're arguing is that they have absolute value um, and others don't have absolute value. And they want to say that the, the infant is a, is a human being but not a human person. Well, they themselves were one like, were like that, weren't they? Um, and furthermore, are they exercising um, whatever they claim belongs to personhood when they're asleep? And so there's a certain contradiction in the argument that, that they venture forth. Um, ad additionally, one can consider the various goods that they're upholding. Um, obviously, when they theorize, they're upholding the good of, of, of truth. Um, it seems to be a, the, the supreme good. And one reason why people want to to carry out infanticide is to say that, well, the, the child is too diseased, won't be able to live a, a fully human life anyways, or I won't be able to achieve uh, some type of social or economic or political success or, or attain my education if the child, you know, if, if I have to take care of, of the child, and the child would just suffer as, as a result. Um, now, of course, the gold standard, and, and what would really refute this, or I think would really refute this, would pertain to what we've spoken about before con concerning the, the understanding of the nature of the fetus and the, the embryo and so on and so forth. So, um, and once again, when we go back to potentialities, uh, we, we talk about the human being uh, reaching the age of reason, what is it, around the age of 12 or the age of 13, uh, uh, kids get, get confirmed somewhere around there. Yeah. Um, and, and so, um, it, it's interesting to think about that, that obviously the child has the potentiality within them so that later it will develop. So um, these people often make a distinction between being a human being and being a human person. And they focus in being a person on a specific type of activity that is carried out um, by the... Whoops. <laughs> by the human oh, wow. being. Uh-oh. I hope that wasn't because of what I was saying. <laughs> <laughs> Oh well, we'll you, just you can have to that, huh? guess tape doesn't hold it up, folks. Yeah. Oh. Just, uh, but so. Continue with what you're saying. I'm just going to. Yeah. Well, I'm trying to know what I was saying. That was kind of astonishing. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, um, and uh, the flag was uh, was aborted in, in a certain way, huh? Yeah. Um, so in, in in any event. Um, the, the distinction between potentiality and actuality is important here, um, and and the the presence of the potentiality both in those who would who would countenance infanticide and in those who would be the victim of what they want to countenance. Um, each of them has potentiality. Um, each of them, uh, you know, each of them is not fully and was not fully and is not fully actualized as a human being at all times. So the very uh, fact that people in their 20s can say that, 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 that people in their, you know, who are five or six years old or, or younger um, can undergo infanticide uh, is actually um, a form of reasoning which, which would be uh, contradictory. Uh, so, so there are ways of opposing it. It, it. it does seem to me the one thing to notice right away is that, the, is that people are venturing forth um, theories. They're venturing forth opinions. Um, and uh, um, one can start, start there, that, that while well, you're thinking and uh, you're making truth claims. So let's start with that. And then one can move from there 
to uh, move deeper, I, I, I think. And, and, uh, but, um, so there are, I think there are ways, good ways to, to oppose it. And uh, um, you know, that, that's where I'd begin anyways. Mm, that's good. So to conclude, um, what, what, why are you personally pro-life? Like, what are the, some of the top reasons why? Oh, well, I, I think that it, it goes back to, uh, an under, you know, it, it goes to, um, you know, maybe there's a couple elements, but the, 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 the big element is a matter of, 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 of understanding and, and love, I, I, I suppose, um, and knowing the truth of the matter and what the truth of the matter is, um, and, and uh, certainly what's, what's present at conception, um, is a human being and, and, and a human person. And uh, I, I think that uh, right, right reason and right love understands that. Um, and it's, it's true both by way of reason and, and, uh, um, and uh, there's something visceral about it too. I mean, in, in, in the sense that, that I know that, well, I was once in that state, right? And, and so, as I mentioned to you, when it, when it comes to opposing people, who, who, uh, who espouse infanticide, um, that the, the very fact that I value my life and my, my being requires me to consider the circumstances in, to, in, you know, from which I've come into existence in the first place and all the steps that I've, I've gone through. Um, and, and so, for, so uh, for me to ascribe value to my own existence as it is now requires me to ascribe value to existence from the moment of, of, of conception. But there's deeper, you know, then you, you move into the deeper reasons, which I've, I've touched on to, to some extent with respect to um, uh, the proper understanding of philosophy of nature and so on. Um, so, you know, I, in my own experience, I, I would say that the, the understanding played, played a large role because people can be visceral and you can go in either direction, right? And, uh, and so, but the, the understanding um, provides something very, very important um, and, and that uh, um, if one reflects on it and one thinks about it, then, then um, one should be able to, to, to uh, come to an understanding that what's present at conception is a human being. And uh, there's other forms of reason which confirm that, not just philosophical reason, but as you mentioned, uh, science people use ul ultrasounds and, and they can see that what's alive that's that there's something alive and so th the the issue then would be to show them and to have them help them understand that what's alive is actually a human being you know it, it's not a fish um, it's not a dog it's not a, not a cat and so on and so forth but this is a human being and as it's moving through various stages of actualizing the potentialities it has as as a human being so that's um that's some of, of what I would, how I'd respond to that, John Paul. Mm. Excellent. Thank you so much. You're Dr. welcome, David. You're Thank welcome. You. Thank you very much for inviting me.